Good afternoon, Lion Golf Academy members and guests, and welcome back to another video. I'm not going to bore you with a long introduction. This is basically Tiger Woods, Ben Hogan, comparing them, what they do good, what they do differently, but they're both great ball strikers. If you like this, hit that like and subscribe. Make sure you put the notifications on. It helps the channel grow. And let me know what you want to see in future episodes, and let's get started. So these two swings are very similar in the way that Hogan and Tiger uses their body's rotation. The things that are different are how the hands and arms are connected to the turn as they strike the golf ball. So Hogan was very famous for keeping his right elbow tucked to his side, and this allowed him to strike the golf ball more with his right side. Tiger, however, allows these hands and arms to disconnect slightly to get to that second plane. And we see this evidence on the path of the hands as they escape out of the term. Hogan's is very low and Tiger's is more down the line. And what Tiger is trying to establish is he's trying to get his hands and arms to go down the line longer instead of being connected to his core. So we see as they both turn, watch Hogan's right elbow. His right elbow gets pulled back into his right side where Tiger's is just getting pushed out slightly. In other words, his arms are now going higher than Hogan's. We can see Tiger Woods golf shaft much higher than Ben Hogan's shaft. You can see all this room that's created between this area here, a lot of space, whereas Ben Hogan, his arms are connecting to his body quicker, so there's less space. So it looks a little bit congested, but in all reality, he's just connecting to his power source much sooner than Tiger. And as we progress up to the top of the swing, very similar position in terms of their body. Hogan, however, is more centered on his spine angle. Tiger also implements rotation plus some weight transfer from the right side to the left side. And we can see evidence of this as how much more of his right side of his body is over his initial spine angle, where Hogan is still kind of in the middle. Players of Hogan's generation started to develop this swing because they didn't have to time that shaft as much. They started to connect it with their core sooner because as they started to turn, that club shaft was a little bit stronger than the hickory shafts so they didn't have to release with their hands too soon they developed a powerful motion where tiger is almost adding to this as well he's getting some weight distribution on the right side so he can push off going left so he is a little bit more left to right in his motion where hogan is more centered and turning around that spine angle so based on that top position here as we turn into the target we can see how much more of Hogan's body is over his left side of his center point where he started. However, his head is still in that center point. Tiger is starting to drive the power from his legs to his lead hip. His upper body is still closed to allow his shoulders to tilt with the room that's established between his lower body and upper body, where Hogan has already connected his right elbow to his body source. So his way to get that club to the impact position is pure rotation from this point. So I want you to watch the right elbow action. If you can see Hogan, his right elbow is connected to his right hip kind of stuck on his belt buckle as his whole body is now turning and driving that power through where tigers you can see it's crossing his chest slightly it's not as connected to his right side that's because his arms are in a different plane they're on a higher plane and they have to come down as his body turns or hogan's on a lower plane because he's established that connection in the backswing positives of connecting sooner is there's less arm manipulation at impact the positives of what tiger does is there's less turn with the upper body because his hands have to reconnect but that involves a slight bit of timing and here's some slight more evidence of more rotation the line going right down the middle of their chest is basically where the center of the spine is pointing we can see they both have very similar tilting actions however look at the location of where ben hogan's hands are versus the location of where tiger woods hands are right at impact so we can see when you have more rotation your hands will always be behind that rotation slightly now his triangle is favoring his right side tiger woods triangle is favoring his center so his hands are now connected with his center of the chest where hogan's is connected with his right side now remember hogan in his famous secrets book talked about hitting the golf ball with his right side so he was always adamant of connecting that right elbow as soon as he can to his body and just rotate and strike that golf ball with his right side that's why his hands are favoring his right side where tiger is favoring the center so you can see if we draw a circle around their hands at impact Look at all the lines that are meeting Tiger Woods' hands. Spine angle meeting his hands. His shoulders are lined up with his hands. His weight 
distribution with his lower body, specifically his trail leg is driving up into through the hands. His left lead leg is bracing the hands, so everything is meeting at the hands. Remember, that is where the power is delivered. Hogan was more rotational, and you can see at impact, his hands are in a similar position relative to his head, but how he gets there is a little bit different. We have the lines not quite meeting them in the same place. Now, with not as many lines meeting up at impact, you can see why he needs to have a little bit more timing involved. So let me know what you guys think because this might be a little confusing, but this is the best way I can try and describe it. And I'm trying to keep it as simple as we can. The goal is just to look at these two individuals and see what they did differently and what they did the same. So this view down the line will definitely take a look at the connection that Ben Hogan establishes right away with his right side. So as we get midway point, we can already see Tiger connecting his club shaft and his club head closer to his hand position. Now this view of this camera was slightly off to the left side, but I promise you, if you look at him from directly behind you will see that club head right over his hands at this point and that is truly rotating around his spine and everything's pointing at his target direction you'll see hogan on the left side now i drew a club because you can't see it in this low quality video but the club is there i traced it in the next couple frames you can see the shaft reflection in the sun but that is where his circle is so he's not as connected with his arms which is not as connected with his chest but he is connecting the right elbow to his body sooner which gives him a much flatter plane and a position to turn and drive that golf ball with his body where tiger take a look at his right elbow is starting to go away from his body creating it more width, creating more stability. He's trying to keep his hands in a linear position so the club works straighter from this point of view, where Hogan is not so linear, it's more rotational, where the club is now connected to his right hip very soon. And one similarity that they are doing is they're definitely staying in their initial spine angle, they're staying in their posture, and you can tell by that line, still staying where they were first put in. And this is something that all great ball strikers across any part of time all share so now we're at the top position of both players so we can see that tiger definitely got his lead arm up to that secondary plane line where hogan is stuck on that lower plane line still in their posture still getting ready to strike down the golf ball tiger is going to be more up and down with his arms where hogan is going to be more rotational so hogan will get to that lower plane line much sooner where tiger will drop his hands straight down the slot now i'm going to clear up these lines i'm going to put a little triangle to kind of show you something I got a bunch of angles on the screen. Let's take it one by one. So at the top, this is where the transition happens. We can already see that Hogan has his right elbow really tucked into his right side. This gives him a wider angle for his elbow connection to his body. Tiger, on the other hand, has gotten to the secondary plane line. He can establish a tighter angle, which is what Hogan will do as he transfers into the target. He loses a lot of the angle as the transfer happens, where Tiger loses less angle as the transfer happens, which shows that his arms are freer. They're moving more in an upper down motion as we come on down into impact we start that transition we're coming on down so we see the path of the hands are just going to follow that red line once we get down into this position slightly before impact this is where the transfer is happening we can see that hogan went from around 90 to 95 degrees at the top of his swing to 37 degrees now he has to do that he's trying to get his elbow connected so their right elbow is now in a position to try and lead the hands tiger doesn't have to do as much there's fewer things that can go wrong where hogan you can see he's compressed it from 90 95 degrees to anywhere from 35 to 40 where tiger goes from 60 to 65 degrees down to 40 degrees so his range of motion is smaller than what hogan is strictly because he's disconnected his arms with his lower body and as we strike down into impact we can see how much more rotation Tiger has in his lower body compared to his upper body. Ben Hogan is slightly open to his target with his upper body. Now watch as we go past impact. We can still see Tiger's right hand. We can still see the club head. Where Hogan, everything has gone around and left. So he exits sooner because of that rotation. And when we come on up through past impact, we can see that Tiger's end point's around 50 degrees with that triangle, where Hogan is around 75. If we draw a really big line and connect these three angles, we can see how close they were. So he was really connected with his body. Tiger, however, when we connect that bottom one with the top one, we can see it's not as connected because he's involved that second plane. By introducing that secondary plane line for your hands and arms to get higher, there's some positives and negatives. The positives is it's a more up and down motion. You can retain that angle longer. There's less flux fluctuation of that angle between your forearms. However, the positives for Hogan is because he connected with his body sooner, you can see that path was straighter. 
They both have incredible powers. They utilize them differently. But one thing that stays constant is their footwork, their balance, their rotation, and that spine angle. If they maintain that spine angle, you can develop any golf swing. So hope you guys like this. If you did, hit that like and subscribe and notifications on if you don't mind. It helps promote the channel. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments. Too much detail, not enough detail. Am I going crazy? Is this just fluff? Whatever you want to talk about, but I think it's a cool thing to show you. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time. Fairways and Greens.